<laughs> Guys, don't worry about the late comers. I'm an improvisational comedian. If it was the big man at the end, correct. <laughs> so yeah, it's lovely being Scottish this year. As a stand-up, I've always been averse to talking about my Scottishness. Because it's a weird thing, because in stand-up they'll say, oh, she was funny, but she was awfully Scottish. With Brendan Burns, they don't go, he was funny, but he was awfully Australian. And I'm thinking, fuck it, what for Billy Connolly, get it up, ye. <laughs> so I'm sticking with And of course, this year, there's a very special reason to be happy to be Scottish. And the reason I want to tell you is it's not just a Scottish thing. I'm actually 46 this year, and being 46 is a very poignant year for me. Because my mummy died when she was 46. she just turned 47, but it's around about the same age. My mummy was murdered, and I was 21 when she died. And this year I'm 46, and my daughter is 21. So there's a big emotional cycle going on. So I thought, murder and pain, what will I do? Make a show about it. I know what you're thinking, this better be funny, fat. <laughs> it's a wee man fell off the end. <laughs> being Scottish because what did we have? A terror attack. What did we think? Cabaret. <laughs> Every other country all over the world. The Al-Qaeda are coming. The Al-Qaeda are our country. Uh, we're not really bothered. <laughs> Who here remembers when the IRA were a threat? Do you remember that? The IRA are here and they used to have things like a bomb scare in Marks and Spencers and Glasgow people didn't give a flying fuck. If you, it's true. Marble Arch, Marks and Spencers, folk, ranty Dulwich and Glasgow them like that. Catherine, can you see if they've opened up yet? I'm desperate for some scones. <laughs> Noses up again. Son, I'm waiting in a pair of tights. Got I don't give a fuck about the bomb. Got to open the door. Don't care. And of course, the minute the Al-Qaeda arrived, you're like, yada, yada, yada. And it's weird because I was in Leeds the day it actually happened. I was doing stand-up. And round about half past four, my daughter called me. And I'm sure that all you is, who here is about my age and got kids about 19, 20? Give me a yeah. 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 How much shite did they talk? <laughs> yeah. It's just, I mean, they've been talking, she's been talking since she was two, do you know what I mean? And she phones me up and she goes, Mum, and I don't know about you guys, but I listen in, you know, like an Al Qaeda phone call, I listen for the buzzwords like rape, abortion, chlamydia. I'm not really listening. It's just highlights. <laughs> There's only so much shite you can listen to about a pencil case and a pony in there. So anyway, I'm in Leeds and I'm sitting there on the couch. It's half past four, I've not got a telly on nothing. And she phones me up and she's having a party in my house and I had to leave the country because I've hit 46 and I don't like folk touching my cushions. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I come from a really shit place in Glasgow. I'm from the East End. I am from Shettleson, and Shettleson the age expectancy is 55, and Fallujah, Iraq, it's 65. <laughs> I've got relatives no gone to the bingo to save up money to get 10 years in their life in Iraq. So that's how crazy I am. So that's the kind of place I come from. So I've never had good furniture, but now that I'm a bit older and I've made a bit of money, I bought a couch and I'm quite sure people are touching my cushions. <laughs> I'm sure of it. So I'm out of the country, she's having a party, and um, I'm sitting there on the couch and she phones me and she goes, Mum, I goes, what is it? Is, is your feet in the cushions? And she says, eh, my party's just fucked tonight. And I'm like, that's a shame. I'm not really listening. I was like, oh, really? She went, yeah. And this shows you how blase Glaswegians are about a terror attack. This is exactly what my daughter said. Do you know how Caroline works in Costa Coffee in Glasgow Airport? I'm like, yeah. She says, um, two blocks of Ram the Airport. Anyhow, Costa won't let her out. <laughs> and I went, what? She went, put the news on, fatty! <laughs> and I did. I switched on BBC News 24, and there was Hugh Edwards. There's been a terror attack in Glasgow. In the background, there's a car on fire. And they went, this is in Paisley, at Glasgow Airport. And I went, it's just a fucking motor on fire in Paisley. <laughs> That's not a news item. That's a Monday. <laughs> I'm like, a motor on fire is news? But apparently, and he's given it, and it's been rammed into the airport. Now, you may remember that day because it was Gordon Brown's first day in the job. And as I like to call him, Gordon Brown, the Presbyterian Prime Minister, he doesn't look like the kind of man that would shout, let's have a picnic! He looks like the kind of man that would go, let's sit down and consider why logarithms are important in everyday language. <laughs> I'm sure he wears a jaggy vest under his clothes. <laughs> it's a bit like a Protestant Opus Dei. <laughs> he, he suffers pain, but he doesn't know why he wants it. <laughs> It's so true, isn't it? And he's there on the news. Now, I don't know.
don't know about you, but I hate the fact Gordon Brown has been touted as our first Scottish Prime Minister. Because who here knows Tony Blair was Scottish? Give me a yeah. 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 That's not a lot of you. There's 75 people in this room. Tony Blair was born in Edinburgh, raised in Glasgow, but unlike everybody, other world leaders who embrace their national identity, he kidded on his English. And as far as the Glaswegian's concerned, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't like him anyway. I'm hoping he's fucking Ukrainian, to be honest. So anyway, Gordon Brown's first day in the job, and Gordon's up there, and he's making a good show of it. He's like, there's been a terror attack in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> See, what, did, what did he just do? He's moving, did you see? A uh, car has rammed into Glasgow Airport. <laughs> I'm like, that's extremely odd. It looks like, do you remember when you were a kid and you could take a ping pong ball and throw it in a clown's mouth and you get a fish? <laughs> Maybe we could do that to him. And Gordon Brown's there on the job and the reason that it was so important was the whole of the press was in London looking at Gordon <laughs> on his first day. Who was in Glasgow? Nobody. A terror attack has happened. Who did they get in to cover it? You know that woman who's on your local news? You know the women that go, there's been three people found on a tricycle in the high street. <laughs> you know that woman, I'm looking up an owl stuck up a tree. My name's Senga Magahi. I'm here to save the last owl in Aberdeen. <laughs> She's the woman they've picked for the job. And I'm thinking, oh, for the love of God, no, don't let her speak. And Hugh Edward goes, live over to Glasgow, there's been an Al-Qaeda terror attack. And there's Senga, and it's Senga's first day in the job. And because it's the summer, our mum's bought a cagoule and she's zipped it all the way up. And she's tied it down her face. <laughs> My name's Senga McGahee, welcome to Glasgow Airport. I'm like, well, please don't let her fucking talk, okay? And she gets a witnesses, and the witness she gets is the wee woman called Isa. Isa's got a tartan coat on, a wee scarf, and she's got her big tartan suitcase, but it doesn't have wheels, because that would be witchcraft. <laughs> and we eyes has got a case, our man, Archie, Archie, Archie's where he's got his wee hat and coat and saying to Magahi, hi, can you tell me what happened? And Glaswegians have a wonderful way of speaking with their body, they do this. <laughs> I can. <laughs> we came to the airport this morning at half past nine, didn't we? We did. <laughs> We went in and we got a cup of tea. She's right. Four pound twenty. There's a fucking car on fire behind us. Fox heats are blazing. Four pound twenty. It wasn't even a pot. It was a cup with a tea bag where it tastes like milk carton. I'm like, get to the fucking point. And I said to Archie, that's not a cup of tea. No, it's no. <laughs> and I think I was getting it in the ear. Get to the point, get a reaction. And she says, can you tell us what you saw, Isa? She went, I can. <laughs> I heard the bang and I rang outside and I looked and there was a big motor in fire. And at this point, I realised that Glaswegians, for the rest of that day, are going to try the hardest not to say the P-A-K-I word. Because it trips very easy off the tongue from a Glaswegian. And we eyes us there, it's a big moment. Senga's got her finger in her ear, her cagoule zipped up. I'll tell you what happened, there's a motor went fire and two people who were Asian. <laughs> right close, Isa. Come running out. And then she says to her, could you tell me how you feel about that? Aye, I said to Archie, I think that boy's heat's in fire. <laughs> And they're like, get them off the news, they're no interesting. They get the one woman there, and it's that woman who we all know is a stereotypical Scottish woman that we all hate, because she labels the lot of us. You know that skinny woman who's got the whitest blonde dyed hair in the entire world? She's got a fake tan like she just bought a big giant tin of Cuprinol and went, <laughs> that's what it says on the tin. <laughs> if she misses a bit, an oxo cube. She is brown. She has this part here is like a crocodile handbag. She's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gold jewellery on. She looks like Tutankhamun's wife, Margaret Kamen. <laughs> Millions of gold. And she's standing there. And I'm looking going, please don't let her speak, don't let her speak. And they say, can you tell me what happened? Aye! 